We are joined now by Dr. Kate White, one of the speakers at the Future of Biophysics Symposium, which is always one of the most anticipated sessions of the meeting. Dr. White, it's great to see you. Thank you. All right, let's jump right in. You're speaking specifically about mapping the pancreatic beta cell. Talk to me a little bit about that. Right, so we're using soft x-ray tomography to map pancreatic beta cells. What I really like about this technique is it gives us a way to image the entire cell without having to do any sectioning or having to do any chemical fixation. So we're basically imaging the near native state of these cells. And what's nice about that is we can actually quantify the number of insulin granules, the mitochondria, their distribution throughout the cell, and see how that changes when we stimulate these cells with glucose. So the pancreatic beta cell is a cell type in our body that secretes insulin in response to glucose. Um, or basically in response to eating. So um, these are the types of cells that really have a lot of trouble for people that have diabetes. So that's why we're interested in studying these cells because um, most of the diabetic drugs basically are, are, are targeting these cells, or a lot of them target these cells to produce more insulin, to pump out more insulin. And as these cells do that, it's really jamming up the trafficking of these, of these cells. So they're, they're pumping out all of these insulin vesicles throughout the cell and that causes a lot of stress for the cell. So we eventually want to be able to compare what happens in healthy pancreatic beta cell to a beta cell from a person that has type 2 diabetes or, or something like that and basically compare the differences in how these cells traffic out uh, insulin. All right, well spell out some of the practical applications when you do get to that point. Our overall goal here is to uh, map the entire pancreatic beta cell, so we want to model the whole cell. So all the data that I'm collecting, which is mostly structural information at the, at the cell level, like cell biology, structural information, and we want to correlate that with a bunch of other imaging techniques. So we can use cryo-electron tomography or live cell imaging, and so we basically have an imaging across scales platform to understand, or at least to try and characterize uh, cell biology um, more in depth than we've been able to do before. The other thing that we're doing is we'd like to couple this type of data with, with other data like proteomics and metabolomics and um, a, a bunch of different kinds of different types of models. So now we can start to couple structural models with maybe m models that are looking at the metabolism of these cells. So the goal is to basically have an unbiased characterization of, of cell biology when we start to couple these different models together. You know, so people have been trying to, to tackle this for so many years. How far away are some of these things you're talking about? Is it, are we talking a few years? Are we talking decades? So the, for, for my specific project, which is using soft x-ray tomography, um, we're, we've got a pretty good handle on how to do this now, and now it's a matter of just doing it. Um, there's been a lot of really big technology advances lately within the last few years that have been able to really push what we're able to do as far as imaging goes. And I, I mean, I think our first model will probably have, in, ho hopefully in, in a couple of years, like model of the whole cell. I mean, but before we have like a, a really good model that we can use for, for next generation structure-based drug discovery, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, that, that could take a bit longer. And that's the future, <laughs> yeah, I that's, would assume. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the goal for what we're trying to do, yeah. All right, so when you're, you're doing the symposium, what do you want these attendees to take away from your talk? I think, especially for the, the, younger, the younger crowd, so postdocs and students, one thing that I, I would like for them to take away is, is the power of collaborative research. So I've been able to do a lot more with my data because I'm collaborating with a consortium. So this is a community-wide effort. Um, this is this basically, um, we have 17 different labs that are part of this PBC consortium where all of us are trying to better characterize pancreatic beta cell biology. Um, and we're using a bunch of different techniques to do that. So what's nice for me uh, is I have this data set and I have my specific question for what I'm interested in, which is, targeting and, and trafficking different different organelles within the cell. But then I've got people, a bunch of other labs that are interested in modeling that data. And so they're able to help push me to really try and extract the most out of my out of my data as possible. And so that's it's great because it's challenging me to to think about my science in a, in a much more different way than I would have if I was working alone. Well fantastic. Dr. Kate White, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for watching, and if you want to watch more from the Biophysical Society meeting, check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe.